Hey you, what is up, how's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. I wanna talk about a few things. I just actually got out of a massage and this was the first deep, deep, deep tissue massage I had and this thing is painful. If you were standing outside, it pretty much feels like I'm giving birth inside, okay? My masseuse is just telling me, breathe deep and I'm just breathing, it's just like. And then they're just like, she was just like working out all those knots. It's really, really painful. I actually went at a dumb time, which was right after lifting. Take care of your body. Take care of your body. Your body will take care of you and will take care of your mind. All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about the concept of using and leveraging negative emotions to drive you versus positive emotions. And some of the advice that I'm gonna give you is not the general mainstream accepted advice, okay? But that's just how I think and I want you to um, just pick that advice up and, and, and see if, if it works for you or not, okay? But I think that this will massively improve and change your life if you apply it and actually really understand what I'm saying and internalize it. So let's jump right into it. So now, you can use positive emotions to make yourself feel better, right? So you could be like, hey, and that's what that's one advice that kind of everybody gives. So they're like, hey, um, improve in your life and just like imagine it into existence and self-manifestation and look in the mirror and say that you're the best 10 times, 20 times, uh, do affirmations, do visualizations, uh, write in the journal your goals, so there's just a lot of advice that people give on uh, thinking about it positively, right? So now that might work, but that could also not work for certain kinds of people. And again, you have to understand what personality type you are and what works really well for you. That's the most important thing because what jives and works well with you. Now, I'll give you specific examples. So for me, uh, negative emotions actually work really well. It's not just like, oh, fight, yeah, competition. It's more like, look at yourself in the mirror. Like if I'm looking at myself in the mirror, I'm just like, what do you look like? Like that's disgusting. You've spent 10, 20 years, like you, you could have been working out for the last five years and this is what you could have looked like and this is what you actually look like. And just like really acknowledging it and just seeing it and feeling it but it doesn't make me cry and I don't just crumble and then I don't do anything about it, but rather it just like l focuses me. It gives me that laser sharp focus because I see, I see it and I feel the pain and I let it sink in. And then I let it sink in deeper and deeper and then I allow it to move me towards actually starting to take action towards that thing, okay? I'll go deeper here. Even starting this Clever Programmer channel. Yes, there were a lot of positive things, right? Lots of subscribers, maybe money, ad revenue. Oh, I'll become famous. I'll be a public figure. Maybe I'll speak one day because of it. And um, providing lots of value to the world. Just a lot of joy and a lot of happiness and changing the world. Now, yes, at surface level, it sounds really good. Yes, it sounds good. Yes, a lot of people will say that that's their deepest, uh, that's kind of what drives them and pushes them through all the obstacles and everything, and it can. But for me personally, it works, but it doesn't work that well. So again, kind of negative emotions work a little bit better for me. So it's like that competition and competitiveness works better. So what I was doing was like, I would look at online channels other coding channels and I was like how how do these guys have so many views and are getting amazing ratings or whatever and how do these guys even have channels they're so bad at teaching this stuff like they're doing such injustice to the people actually learning this stuff there are much simpler ways to teach it why are they making it so complicated and then the examples that they give are like super obfuscated mathematical examples. And if you're a complete beginner, what the hell? You're not gonna learn like that, right? You're looking at this, like for example, 
If you're a complete beginner, wouldn't it be better to learn in a visual way so then when you do something, it makes a square or a circle and if you're wrong, you'll know you're wrong because your code didn't make a circle, right? And so it's obvious, but what will a professor teach you? All right, guys, we will write a Fibonacci sequence today. And so if you're a beginner, you have no idea where you went wrong. Was your code wrong? Are you actually even wrong? What was the right result that you were supposed to get? Is recursion really the thing to be learning when you barely understand how to do a freaking for loop, right? Or a while loop? So there were a lot of things like that, right? That uh, motivated because I saw this and I'm like, why aren't people teaching this the right way? It, that's just like injustice. It's not fair. And I can't believe that people are actually watching this and uh, you know, a lot of people, maybe they're getting value out of it, but a lot of people are like honestly getting more confused than actually helped. And so that drove my motivation um, and desire to do it at a deeper level. And I was like, God, like this just can't be happening. Because how I grew up, a lot of unfair stuff happened around me. And I saw a lot of unfair stuff happen to my friends. So um, I would try to protect them from those unfair things happening. And I cared less about myself and more about other people you know, as I was growing up. Putting that into perspective at my current age and what currently drives me deeper, it's like seeing, like for example, if my friend something unfair was happening or he couldn't stand up, you know, um, to, to his parents or whatever, I'd be like, no, like, yes, you can do this, like tell him this or, um, you know, there is a way to get out of this situation. Why are you okay with it? Why don't you change it? Like, there's so many ways. So that unfair un injustice that would happen to me that I tolerated, when I was seeing it happening to somebody else, I'm like, I cannot tolerate it. This will not happen. I'm not complacent with it. Like, it has to change. So it's similar when um, I'm looking at those channels and I'm like, no, this can't be happening. I'm like, I need to do it. So that, th that's why that drives me at a deeper level. But maybe, you know, who knows? Like, maybe you're young and you're like, wow, I'm gonna grow up and just self-manifest into this amazing, beautiful person. And if it drives you, great. Doesn't do it for me. So. That kind of drove it deeper for me. And you know, certain other, like, um, and I would be like, wow, I need to make a better coding channel and there's so many things I could improve on, so let's do it. You know, let's just jump into it and actually make it happen. Um, and then over time, you know, there are different types of motivation that keeps driving you, but that was the underlying competitiveness that really helped me. Same thing when I was improving in chess. It was a lot of the underlying um, competitiveness and the fight that actually motivated me and pushed me. And if you think of competitions, that's the same reason why people improve so freaking fast if they're part of a team and part of a competition because you have that fight in you, that energy in you, and then you just bring it out. And then you push yourself beyond like what you could actually imagine. Um, and so it's actually good to have that enemy and have that like I need to get to this level and I need to get past it, you know? Like John Sonmez wasn't really my enemy because I liked actually what he taught and that's why I started my channel. But I was like, I gotta get to that point. But when I was starting, you know, coding 360, um, <laughs> I'm just calling it out, but I wasn't really a huge fan of his content. And I was like, if this guy can teach Python, again, no offense, um, I'm like, there, there's so many ways to improve upon this, okay? Um, he, he, he has good content, but I think he honestly can just do so much better. And, um, and I was like, I can improve on this. I can improve on this. So in the start, it was like, when my channel was zero subscribers, yes, there was a lot of other driving factors. What was pushing me was like, I need to get to this point. You know, get to this many subscribers that Coding360 has. So it was like that internal competitiveness, right? It just brought out that competitiveness. Like, all right, let's go. And then I would just like keep going. And then once I beat his channel and it intersected and we beat it, right? Like for example, I'd look it up on Social Blade and Social Blade would say, at this rate, you're gonna beat his channel at five in five years from now. And I'd be sitting there, I'd be like, really, five years from now? Watch me get it down to one year in a week or two, two weeks, you know? And so then when I would look at it again, because my subscriber growth increased faster, it would say, okay, now, it looks like you can beat him one year from now and I kept getting it down. So that competitiveness drove me. So, and then eventually I caught up to him and then I had, I set bigger and bigger challenges for myself to appeal to that competitive part in my brain and keep that accountability and that motivation going past just the surface level of 
what, whatever else things I wanted, like a bigger house, maybe like take my family on traveling, things like that. Another thing that really drove me was, and I've shared this before, but like my mom had an accident, I couldn't, nobody could actually afford her surgery in my family. And so seeing that, and I'm just like, how pathetic is that? That you have a family and they're adults, they spend their whole life, we love this person, and as a whole family, we can't even afford her surgery. I'm like, school system is just a scam. You get out with 100, 20, 50, $300,000 loans, you barely have a skill set that people will actually pay you for or hire you for. You cross your fingers hoping they'll get a job, not really, and even when you get the job, you don't use any skills that you actually learn in the school. And the people who are teaching you those courses don't have any skills themselves, and they're stuck teaching it. Or maybe they do, but they're not that good usually, okay? So, and it's like charging you ridiculous prices for those classes, okay? so. I was like, there's no way that school will actually help me where I need to get to, and all for like a below six-figure income. If you're living in America, and if you're living like, for example, I'm right now in LA, Hollywood. Yeah, good luck surviving off of like $40,000 a year. Like, barely will cover your rent, and then you have to pay taxes on it, and then you have to actually do stuff like maybe get a coach, or maybe you need to get a car, or you have like so many extra bills, and good luck if you need a subscription to something, or you wanna get meal prep, or you wanna get cleaning, or you wanna actually just even do stuff outside, good luck. And then, do you think you'll be able to take care of your family members with that freaking money that where you can barely support yourself? How disgusting is that? You spent, your, you spent so much of your life, and only enough to barely support yourself. Is that okay with you? That's not okay with me. Going deeper into those negative emotions um, and actually poking at the things that drive you and motivate you, right? And you're just like, I can't have, like this level of complacency, I just won't have it, okay? And just saying it and being honest about it, I believe can actually help you a lot, right? And uh, gr again, Maybe this is not the style for everybody, okay? Maybe not everybody learns like this or improves like this, but it does help me, and maybe it can help you. However, in the mainstream media, they'll never give you this advice. So if you've never practiced it or tried it, you know, give it a try. Like, be extremely honest with yourself, and don't get into a depressive state. Don't get depressed. Um, you know, you see it, and you're just like, oh man, like, I wanna just cry in a corner now, but like, exactly, specifically see how much you suck at something, understand it, and then systematically start improving in it, you know? So if it's like table tennis, it's like, oh man, like, I'm just so discoordinated, like, my hands just can't even move, like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then, you know, uh, and then just like, look at him like, oh man, I suck so bad. And then know exactly how much you suck. So here's what I mean. Ping pong has a rating system. And so, maybe the best player is like, 3,000 rated player, okay? ELO rating system, the same that chess has, the same that actually even Tinder has. So see what a 2,000 level player plays at. Understand specifically what a 1,600 level player plays at. And then understand specifically what your rating would be if you played competitively. So maybe your rating would be like 200, 250, you suck. Then, now that you know exactly how much you suck, you could actually, is that Keemstar? That's Keemstar. Yo! <laughs> that was epic. Back to the point. Knowing and understanding exactly how much you suck is very important, okay? So it's like, your rating is 250, now you got it, now you know exactly what your rating is, right? And now you can look up material, how to improve as a 250 rated player to get to 300. Now every advice that will come your way is, will, will be very specific. So yes, first it can be very depressing putting yourself in a number, oh man, but now you have something measurable. Whereas people in life are just like a leaf in the wind and just like blowing and being controlled by their emotions and um, you know, they'll play pool for their whole life but never actually improve in it. Or they'll code their whole life but just have a, a one skill, um, be at a specific level. Or they'll type for their whole life and their typing speed is always the same and it's like below average or average. So why not actually make improvements? So now in table tennis when you realize what your rating is, what kind of material you could look at to actually improve, that was the byproduct of knowing specifically and exactly how much you sucked, okay? And coming to terms with that. And then from there, improving.
Um, and, I, and I honestly feel there's like beauty in that. So it's like when it comes to fitness, you know, most people are just like, oh man, yeah, I'm okay. I'm average. Yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah, it's just like, okay. But like, really? Are you though? Are you at that level where you're happy with it, you know? Um, what can your body actually look like if it was at its best ever, right? How would your muscles look like? What would your strength be at? Could you carry your friends? Something happened to your wife, could you carry her? If you're falling off of a cliff, could you actually pull up and get back? There's like so many people who don't do a lot of physical activity and they'll like run around a little bit and just like um, uh, get a cramp in their leg, okay? That's weird, man, that's kind of disgusting. And so if you tell your brain that that's disgusting, that's such a strong emotion, such a strong word, for example, that your brain will be like, I'm not gonna be complacent with this behavior. Whereas if you just tell your brain, oh like that's okay, like if I eat candy like once in a while or like I don't code once in a while, like that's okay. But if you're like, no, that's, <laughs> that's how my brain thinks. Okay, so this might be aggressive for some of you, so just tone it down to your level. But my brain is like, no, you're a loser if you don't code or you're a loser if you're not doing this. There's something wrong with you and it needs to change. So when I tell myself that, it's like, whoa, it's like a reality check, okay? And then it actually helps me start doing the new thing and then eventually it turns into a habit and it turns into a system and it turns into something that I can improve forever. I don't care about the surface level stuff anymore. I'm improving at it in a much, much, much deeper level and a much, much, much faster level, okay? Don't be okay with the average, okay? And know exactly where you are and know exactly how much you suck in the thing that you're doing and then improve. Don't be pessimistic, but just be hyper-realistic and then improve from there, okay? I'm a very optimistic person. If I'm like, oh, my rating in ping pong is 250, I'm like, I know I can get it to 1,000 or 1,500 within two to three months, but then I focus and I improve those skills. So if you're working on the table tennis skill set, right? And you're like, first you're just hitting the ball like, like this or something, okay? Now you could keep hitting it like this for the rest of your life and you'll never improve. Or you could just actually watch a video and be like, oh, okay, you know, I need to, this is like, the stroke is like this. So then you start practicing, right? So you're like, and what will happen when you start to play like that? Even though, so you've played like this for years. Okay, you've played like this for years, but now you start playing like this and what happens? You completely will get destroyed the first few times or maybe even for the first few weeks or maybe for the first few months because now this is a new style that you've actually never tried before and it'll completely throw you off, okay? How much you can improve with this style has a way bigger ceiling than how much you can improve with this style. With this style, it's like you'll max out right away but that instant gratification is good but with this style, you can actually keep improving and working on your forward stroke for years and improving. So maybe in a month to two months, you'll catch up to this thing, even though it'll be painful in the time being, and then eventually you'll just smoke past it and keep improving forever. Same thing with take it for code. You can keep coding the crappy way forever, or you can actually start learning new things and keep improving, okay? So one of the things I've learned is called Vim, and it was really painful to learn Vim, okay? So if you're a developer or you know what it is, you know exactly what I mean. What happens when you learn Vim the first time? Your typing sucks. You can't write one thing. It's frustrating. It's like, man, I just wanna go back to how I regularly did things. But then, what starts to happen? You start getting good at it. It takes a few weeks, it takes some months, lots of frustration. It's almost like getting your left hand to be as good as your right hand. And then, you get good, and then you explode past. So now I smoke anybody who, who just types code or anything regularly, because with Vim I can like cut lines, paste lines, drag lines, go to the end of a line, go to the start of a line, go to the end of a word, start of a word, cut two lines, take four lines and indent them. It's literally magic if you see my screen and what hap what's happening, you'll be like, whoa, what's happening? That's the same thing that you can actually bring into your life you know, that's what I do, and I'm improving every time. And if I'm coding, I'm not just coding the same way every time, I'm focusing on like newer and newer challenges and bigger problems that I can actually solve that keep me improving, okay? But I always know how much I suck at something and then where to improve, and I'm very optimistic because I've done it so many times and so many different skill sets that it's a system, and almost anything in life is a skill, and you can improve 
in it systematically, okay? So leverage your negative emotions and uh, leverage knowing how much you suck at something and don't shy away from it, embrace it because it's gonna take you out of that nasty place that's I call complacency. I think it's the darkest, deepest limbo that anybody can ever be in. And it's just like being okay, okay, like oh, just hanging out with my friends and oh, it looks like today I'm just gonna go to Disneyland and oh, oh, so fun. Like, oh, it looks like this party and it's cool. It's cool to do that and have those types of days. But you do this for a week and month and people are just moving with their emotions and feelings. When they look back, there's not a single skill set that they developed over that time. They haven't made any forward progress. But you take actually control and you get out of complacency. And how do you get out of complacency? By shocking yourself with those types of thoughts, honestly. You know, that's why Gary Vee is, has like really dark thoughts. He's like, hey, I imagine my family member like getting killed under a car and he's like, it drives me and I'm like, oh, sh like I don't want to let that happen. I don't know. He's, he's, He's even a little bit more beyond me, but it helps them, okay? So understand what helps you and what triggers you, and don't give a shit about what the mainstream thinks, okay? Use those triggers to move you forward. If it puts you in a depressive state, you wanna cry, then maybe don't do it. But if it puts you in a state where you're like, mm, like, let's go, like it brings out that fight and that inner competitiveness and that, like, that, that domination, that things like self-manifestation and just, think it and it'll come true like Lewis Howe shit that's why I don't really enjoy a lot of his stuff because it's just like think it and wisdom and love life I don't know just not me if the dark one doesn't work for you go the Lewis Howe route right or go the embrace the negative emotions and uh, actually use them as leverage those are my thoughts for today that I wanna share with you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. That's it for this video. As always, I love your faces off. I actually didn't say it in the last video and somebody got upset and they're like, hey, you should say it. So I love your faces off and I'll see you in the next video.